All right, guys, so we're back. We're here finishing off the tour, and you can see in here we have lots of, uh, lots of blackberries. And uh, I've been getting blackberries for most of the season. These are huge. This is Primark Freedom. I think it's the best variety of blackberry there is, but um, the problem is it just seems quite late. And, um, you know, this is on the New Year's growth. This is on the Primacane crop. I mow over the the canes every year, and then that way um, I don't get a first crop. But the first crop last year coincided very heavily with SWD, which we didn't get this year. So I could have gotten away with uh, having a crop of uh, blackberries as a first crop this year. But you can see just how big these are. They're huge. Let me get you a raspberry for comparison, or even a cherry tomato. Here's a raspberry. <laughs> By the way, the raspberries though are insane because they put out a stupid amount of raspberries every day. It was almost annoying to come out here every day and pick them because I'm a bit tired of eating raspberries to be honest with you. But the blackberries are just now coming in for the most part even though I've had raspberries earlier in the season and I want to figure out a way to get them even earlier. I've been doing something called tipping or even pinching you could call it similar to the fig where you just take the tip off and then it sends out these lateral growth uh, shoots and then they flower for you as you can see so it's worked really well but I don't think it's worked exactly how I wanted it to work you can see here here's one that we pinched or tipped probably about a month ago and it grew and then now it's putting out all these fruits so it's it's sort of working but sort of not working I think I need to refine it a little bit there's probably a little bit more of a trick to it than what I'm doing because it seems like some of them if I had just let them grow instead of tipping them they probably would have put out flowers had I not tipped them so it's a bit interesting how it works but kinda like the fig how it forces itself into flower and the raspberries, as I've said, you know, look at the amount of raspberries I've eaten. They're not there anymore, but these are getting hit hard by SWD. Um, this late in the season with the amount of rain we've had, um, it really stinks. But there's no SWD present on them right now. And I think that's be completely because of that bucket that I showed you guys. That bucket is fermenting, drawing all of the SWD to it. And then the SWD is leaving my raspberries alone. So, but I want to mention that all these figs back here, a couple of them still have the fruit, but most of them are going to be gone next year. We're going to put them in larger containers. We're going to up-pot them. Some of them we may use as rootstock. And then we're going to put more figs in the ground here. This... This guy here, this persimmon, I haven't talked about this in a previous video, but where that umbrella is is there because my parents are crazy, number one, but two, because they believe that the air conditioner gets hit with so much heat during the, the summertime that it's keeping the air conditioner warmer, thereby making the thing run more and more and more. So what they want to do is put a tree that will grow quite large over in that area. So I'll plant this persimmon there where the umbrella is. And then I'll have figs all along the house here. We have another persimmon here that will grow pretty tall. But this mulberry here is large. It's huge. But we're going to cut this thing back. We're going to graft Girardi on this. So this whole area here is going to look completely different. This will be an interesting thing to see. Excuse me, guys. Really interesting thing to see comparing this video here because that tree is about 20 feet tall. And you'll see what happens after this mulberry gets cut down. This persimmon grows a little bit. This persimmon gets planted over there. And then all the figs are put in the ground over here. And are just going to grow crazy. So this is going to be a completely different area next year. And the, year, uh, the years after that. Here's my mulberry. I'm sorry. My persimmon. This is Rosianca. And Rosianca has grown like a beast this year. This is a nice tree to go back and look at the size of this one prior 
uh, go back three months ago, look at the previous garden tours I did for you guys, orchard tours, however you'd like to call it, and look at the size of this tree. This is about at least 15 feet tall, the, at the tallest point there. It's huge. And this tree is going to be completely loaded for me next year. The goal is to have this thing so loaded that the limbs are being pretty much uh, draped down to the ground because I want to control the size, right? I don't want to get this thing too tall. So I'm hoping that this branch here, as an example, will just come all the way down to here, maybe more. And that will kind of get a weeping habit out of this, assuming I can get enough fruits on these branches, which should happen. So same thing with these apples trees, you know, uh, these are on dwarf rootstock, but they are growing really well. And I'm hoping that they're going to do a similar thing at some point to kind of have them droop down. This is the comfrey that we had cut back. I did, I cut back this comfrey about 15, 20 days ago, and it's already back. <laughs> It's already huge, it's already flowered, it's already covered in bees. So we have another set of biomass here that we can throw under the, the persimmon here. But it's because this persimmon's grown so much, why don't I throw it under the younger persimmon here? You know, this Girardi mulberry that this will be will be quite dwarfed, but I want this, this persimmon here to grow quite tall. So this will eventually surpass this mulberry in height. And then that way, this will be getting more sunlight than the Girardi here. But very, very interesting, guys. And this mulberry, I gotta eat this thing. Mm. It's so sweet. Oh man, it's huge too. One mulberry, one blackberry fits in your mouth in its entirety. But here we have some figs, guys, planted in the ground. We talked about these. Malta Black is actually fruiting for me without pinching this year. Here's Improved Celeste. And they're getting out of control, right? I like the shape of the Malta Black. Uh, I took off two air layers off of it, but the both of them have too many trunks. And if we can limit the number of trunks, we'll have thicker wood that way. Thicker wood is more figs earlier in the season. We also planted these nice ornamental grasses here, which look beautiful. And I put them all over the yard in front of the house. And uh, they've really done a nice job of looking nice. But we have some bush cherries that I planted here. And these guys will eventually kind of take over this little area here. They're only going to get six foot by six foot about, or five foot by five foot. They're probably gonna interfere and kind of connect with this trunk, but I think it'll be all right. This guy grows too quickly as it is. The soil underneath the tree, we've been putting wood chips underneath this tree for a long time, guys. And there is just mountains of compost under here. This is not me. I didn't put this compost down. This is wood chips. Look, here is the, the original uh, weed fabric that we put down and then on top of this we've just been putting layer after layer of wood chips that has formed about five to six inches of compost so that's what this is growing in these bush cherries is growing in pure compost and they're gonna do really well I have a feeling um, we go back over here guys this is the last section of the yard I want to show you guys there's not much you guys need to see but we have a uh, we have a goji berry here that doesn't look very good because I've taken off most of the leaves. I've taken off most of the fruit because the fruit was kind of not being eaten by me. <laughs> There's too many things to keep up with. And I took off all the fruits and uh, put those fruits in that, in that bucket to attract SWD. But back here is my tea plant, Camellia sinensis. And you can see the things flowering that's pretty cool probably not beneficial to the plant in terms of uh, tea but at some point I'm gonna pick some of this tea we're gonna dry it taste some tea that we've grew ourselves and see what the deal is uh, this is a shadier spot and this tea um, 
we're hoping it can get through the winter time. That's the goal. Um, I've also went to Japan and got a tea farm tour, and they told me how to pick tea. So I'll get it to show you guys a little bit on that, talk a little bit about that, and that'll be an interesting video. Here we have asparagus that's actually doing quite well now, but the canes are all over the ground. So what I need to do is come in here and make this look nice and kind of put some kind of hook on the end, another hook on the end, and have a wire that goes across, keeping this, uh, this stuff back. Because as it is, it doesn't look very good. We also have the grapevines just draping over the side, and it doesn't look really all that pleasant. But at least we have um, blueberries that have fruited for us. They're not growing all that well in this location here. Maybe I need to add a little bit lower of a pH to this area. You know, mess with the pH. But this is another bush cherry we just planted. Same thing with these other blueberries here. They're doing really well, though. Like, this is a new cane that came up from the base. That's great to see. When they're that tall, that vigorous, that's exactly what we want after they fruited. We also have tons of strawberries in here. Similar story with the strawberries. I'm going to come in here, guys, and I'm going to uh, thin these out. This is the Mara de Bois, and we're going to spread the Mara de Bois all over this bed. So, anyway, guys, that's the video, I think. We have some persimmons growing in here, but for the most part, that's it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, this is a nice, short, short and sweet update on what's been going on in the backyard, guys. It really has been a nice year, and I hope you guys will go back and view some of the things we talked about either recently or three months ago because there's a lot of things to look at a lot of things that I've updated you on uh, if you guys want you can follow me on Facebook on Instagram and Twitter now and on those websites I post a lot of things that I don't normally post through YouTube so you can go over there and check out a bunch of what I'm doing in addition to what you've already seen here on the channel alright guys take care this was Ross, and uh, have a great day. Hope you guys learned something from my successes and my failures.